Hi everyone, this is Stefan de Bars with O9 Solution. At O9, we are digitally transforming how businesses plan and operate today. I'm based out of Amsterdam and running O9 in Europe, as well as our global go-to-market practice. Today, we're going to talk about AI-powered integrated business planning on Google Cloud. What is the agenda for today? We'll start with a quick introduction into O9 Solutions followed by the relevance of planning in today's world, where we'll share a couple of learnings from the pandemic. Then we will talk about the architecture of what we call the future ready enterprise, followed by a couple of use cases in retail and manufacturing. Then we close out with the key contacts so that you can engage with us going forward. What is O9 all about? O9 is a premier AI platform for integrated business planning and digital operations. We support companies in getting to a more accurate forecast, a faster response, and end-to-end -end visibility. The online platform is designed for Fortune 500 companies. We're working with leaders in every single industry. In retail, think about Walmart and Starbucks, where we help with forecasting, replenishment, and integrated flow planning. In consumer products companies like Nestle, and AB InBev, as well as Estee Lauder. We support those companies in demand forecasting, supply planning, and integrated business planning. Over the last years, the O9 platform has been adopted by many other leaders in different industries, like ExxonMobil and Oil and Gas, and T-Mobile in Telecom. Last but not least, Google is an O9 client. We're supporting Google consumer hardware in better predicting demand as well as doing the supply planning and integrated business planning. Why are so many of those Fortune 500 companies selecting O9? That is because we have developed this next generation planning platform that is able to cope with the complexity of organizations, as well as using that technology to help them better planning. Then we have designed an UI and UX that from an enterprise point of view feels like your Google device or your Google applications. And hence, it is architected to drive user adoption. Lastly, time to value is extremely important. Our implementations are short, are fast, and follow a very agile implementation methodology. What I want to do with you next is share a couple of learnings from this pandemic. One have large retailers and large manufacturers experience throughout the past couple of months. First, demand variability. It's all about, can I detect better the risks and opportunities on the demand side? What we have seen is those product mix shifts, right? An increase in essential products, but the dec decrease in others. Channel shifts, right? Overnight, we went from the traditional brick and mortar to online. We've also seen regional demand variability with lockdown and reopening schedules varying by country, by city, in some cases by zip code. So the question is, many organizations, how do you now predict demand when all of this happens in a very short amount of time? That is a challenge for many, and that is something we support global companies with. Second is on the supply side. Again, it's all about early detection. Many companies today do not have the visibility on the capacities, material availability, and lead times of their suppliers, co-packers, or contract manufacturers. What we have observed is that supplies and suppliers are slowing down or stopping production, but some are coming back online. So how do I know on which one I can rely and when? Right then what we have seen is that inventory and capacity visibility across the network is challenging. There are multiple ERPs, multiple systems, and they don't have that visibility quickly enough. And then lastly, global companies struggle with visibilities into their supplier network. So very often, they do not know what suppliers can commit and what their capacities and material availabilities are. Third is integrated planning and response. How fast? Is an organization able to run scenarios? Demand can be 90, demand can be 100, demand can be 110. Well, what is my supply chain response? 
What is my true cost to serve? And do I understand the different assumptions that go into those different scenarios? Companies today lack the ability to run fast scenario planning, understanding all the different trade-offs, including the financial ones. Again, that is something where we provide support. The other two key learnings is that enterprise collaboration goes digital. What we have seen is that whether companies have production planners or supply planners or demand planners or commercial planners, overnight, all of those functions had to work from home. And what we've seen is that that boosted online and digital co collaboration, but also showed the possibilities of looking into more centralized and more specialized series that companies can deploy. Lastly, what we've seen is digital operating models for structural transformation. CXOs, they want structural improvement in both resilience and cost. That means that digital collaboration doesn't stop within the four walls of the enterprise. The question is, how can we go beyond that and start connecting with suppliers and customers in more real time? Use that knowledge to then shape demand and better collaborate with suppliers and contract manufacturers. So we have observed a couple of key trends, a couple of key learnings, and we have definitely seen the need for global companies to digitally transform how they do and execute integrated business planning today. Now, what I want to do next is introduce you to the online platform. And I would like to do that by using an example from Google Maps. In this example, Google is able to tell us, hey, leave by 8.45 to arrive at the airport one and a half hours before your flight. Now, we all take this kind of technology for granted. But to me, it's a beautiful example of how we have moved from sort of traditional data and data mining to prescriptive decision making. Now, let's take this example to the enterprise. Assume that we could sense that demand is going up. What do I instantly want to understand? Can I satisfy that demand, yes or no? If not, then I want to understand why not. Where are my constraints? Is it a factory constraint, a material constraint, a logistics constraint? But it doesn't need to stop there. What I truly want is a prescriptive recommendation, like Google Maps is giving us here, and saying, hey, I found out that we have this logistics constraint, but no worries. We can set up an expedite lane so you can fulfill the demand on time. Oh, and by the way, the additional cost of that expedite are X. And that is the notion of digital transformation in the planning space in the enterprise. Now, what is actually behind this example, right, that Google Maps is using? Three core capabilities that I will link to the enterprise and to the online platform in a second. In the middle, you find something that we call the AI powered knowledge model. So in the Google Maps example, right, there is network master data. Think about the map with the roads and the traffic lights and the speed limits. That is obviously connected with the big data store. What do we find in the big data store? Location tracking, calendar information, and the flight status. All those data elements help us spotting risks and opportunities much earlier. So now, when you combine network master data with big data and you run smart algorithms, now on your mobile device, you can now receive prescriptive actions right, with predictive alerts. And again, that is where we need to take enterprise decision-making so that that becomes as easy and as prescriptive as this example with Google Maps. So as of nine, we develop the following platform that allows us in the transformation to prescriptive decision-making. What you can see in the middle is what we call an enterprise knowledge graph the digital brain of the enterprise. That is allowing us to create a full digital representation of the enterprise, from the supply chain, the supplier nodes, the material hubs, the factories, to the ship tos connecting that with the different demand nodes, the products, the initiatives, the sales accounts, all the way to the go-to-market channels, whether it's selling through retail, business to business, or to you know, stores or online, ultimately all the way down to the end consumer, where we can also bring in data from the competitor. So that entire knowledge brain 
is then connected with various data sensors. What kind of data sensors? Think about your ERP, where we connect with master data and transactional data. But more importantly, we want to connect with data that gives us insights in risks and opportunities. So we can connect with external data sources, both structured and unstructured from nature. Can I give a couple of examples? Absolutely. Think about a company like AB InBev, the largest beer company in the world. They're selling through retail, they're selling online and through distribution. What is driving their demand? Think about weather, think about competitive pricing, think about competitive promotions, their own trade promotions, their marketing initiatives. So what if we could collect all the data and use that more intelligently to forecast the demand? Other examples, Starbucks. What is driving their demand? Think about local events, a football game, or maybe a graduation event when a Starbucks store is located on a university campus. Again, weather is also a big influencer in terms of what's driving the month at Starbucks. So again, it's about capturing that information and bringing that in. Is that only happening with consumer products? Not really. Think about companies like Pirelli Tires or Bridgestone Tires. They're selling tires to dealers and OEMs. What is driving their demand? That could be, you know, the number of cars being produced by the OEMs. Can we incorporate that kind of data? And again, the answer is yes. So the entire notion is we are looking out for all those data sources that can either predict a demand risk or opportunity or a supply risk and opportunity and integrate that with the digital brain. Then on top of the digital brain is where we expose different planning workflows. On the far left-hand side, it's all about joint customer collaboration as well as better connecting with my account sales teams, category management, and product portfolio management. Then when I jump into the enterprise again, that is where my commercial teams are connected with my customers. And that is where we need to support them with annual operating planning, initiative planning, demand planning, gap closure planning, and all of that combined with analytics, because planning and analytics go hand in hand. On the same platform, that is where you can do supply chain planning. We are creating a full digital twin of the supply chain, providing end-to-end -end visibility and allowing for smart and intelligent demand supply matching, control tower capabilities, and scenario planning. Obviously, we want to connect that with suppliers and contract manufacturers, as well as with all your factories and logistics operators. Then, similar to the commercial side, planning and analytics go hand in hand which means I can run analytics on my cost to serve, inventory, different planning policies, and so forth. So all of this is then coming together in the sales and operations planning. No more meetings in PowerPoint. It's fact-based decisions live in the platform, where again, the system will prescribe what actions to take based on running the different scenarios. Now, all of this is obviously across time horizons. So from the daily planning, you know, the next four weeks out, all the way to the long range planning, the next five years out. And that is a true differentiator of the R9 platform. On top of that, the entire architecture has been built to be open source, which means that we can integrate with R, Python, Gulobi, and the likes, so that any development that you have made in data science already can be leveraged in the R9 platform. What I want to do next is summarize what we have discussed. So in 09, it all comes together in this enterprise knowledge graph. You should truly see this as the intelligent brain of your enterprise that is connected on the left-hand side with your transactional backbone. We connect with your ERP system, your CRM systems, your PLM systems, and so forth. But also we have this integration framework that I just mentioned with R, Python, Groby, and the likes. And then obviously, at large scale organizations like Walmart or like Nestle or like AB InBev, there is a need for being future proof in terms of having big data capabilities. And that is where we are integrated with Hadoop and Hive. On the right hand side, you see that is where all those different data sources, internal and external, structured and unstructured data, are coming into the brain. Row 9 takes care of data cleansing and data harmonization. Ultimately, 
We offer Nandis best in class UI through tablet, browser, and mobile to the different users in the enterprise. Now, obviously, O9 is born in the cloud and natively deployed on Google Cloud. And that is also how we can scale for and with our global clients. Next are a couple of examples. Where has O9 been implemented? And what is the value that we are unlocking? Now, first and foremost, Google consumer hardware. What happened actually prior to O9? Actually, a legacy system in Excel. What we identified was the supply chain costs and inventory were quite high, uh, as well as there were complexities in managing the end-to-end -end supply chain. Now, with the O9 platform, Google Consumer Hardware is able to make better decisions to reduce inventory and to reduce non-standard supply chain costs, such as you know, flex capacity, expedites, and so forth. At SA Louder, we are replacing SAP APO at a global scale for demand planning, for supply planning, for integrated business planning. One of the unique issues at ST is that their product portfolio changes very rapidly. And hence, there is a need to better plan for new product introductions, but also to link that to the supply chain to minimize solvent risks for products that you're going to take out of the shelves. Two other examples would be in the retail space, Starbucks and Walmart. What are we replacing at Starbucks, JDA, plus a lot of spreadsheets? What was really the issue at Starbucks is that a barista in the store is spending way too much time on inventory, on admin work, on ordering, and Starbucks wants that barista to spend time with the client. The other issue is that there is a lot of demand variability, driven by weather, local events, and so forth. So what we did, we actually built an AI-powered forecasting model, taking into consideration weather data, promotional data, external events data, and predicting the demand at SKU store level, while at the same time linking that in an automated fashion to the replenishment so that the barista can spend time on serving you and me rather than doing ordering and inventory and so forth. At Walmart, we are deploying a solution for integrated flow planning. In other words, how do I take my products from my inbound DCs to the shelf in a most efficient and optimal way, taking into consideration all the different constraints, the cost and the complexities of a network that consists of a million SKUs, four and a half thousand stores, and 200 plus DCs. Prior to 09, Walmart was not able to run a full constraint plan. With WID09, they are, as well as they can run different scenarios to understand trade-offs between improving on-shelf availability and cost. So what is the impact of 09? Let me give you two examples. At a large retailer, where we implemented the 09 platform, we were able to improve the forecast accuracy, improve the service level, in reality, reduce uh, expediting costs for both labor and transportation. Another example would be a large industrial manufacturing company where we implemented demand, supply, and inventory. And we've seen tremendous improvements in forecast accuracy, inventory reduction, uh, as well as a significant improvement to service level and a reduction in expediting and transportation costs. So what we believe is that for every billion dollar in sales, there is a 10 to $20 million value opportunity when companies decide to implement O9. Now, if you want to hear more about O9, about some use cases, or about anything else around our platform, you can contact me directly or our Google client account lead, Simon Baxis. Thank you very much and wishing you a wonderful day.